Oh my, these things are freaking cute. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at this new game console er, from the brand Gamers or something like that. I was really curious what we're going to get because this is something I noticed a very long time ago in AliExpress and I just recently finally like bought it and get, it came in. And I was more like, what are we going to get with this thing? So we have seen our share with like saying plug and play, single player, our Pandora's boxes, but this is something differently. But some of the text on the box are freaking hilarious. Look at this, professional game chip. I'm more like, uh, right? Okay, so then we're going to get basically like an overview on the box, like what this thing is all about. But we're going to take a close look at that later, of course. But when you're looking at what it runs on, so basically it runs on RetroArch with a Linux. Then we do get like multi-languages, but when you're looking at the systems, there's quite a big range of systems up to PlayStation 1. So it's going to be quite interesting. I'm curious how good it will run. But all right, so let's take a closer look at the product itself because I'm really curious and oh my these things are freaking cute <laughs> look at this like these things are so freaking tiny <laughs> like they are like mini pandora's boxes oh man these things are so cute already so this is the main system then we're going to get one with just an usb cable a very long cable and manual then we're going to get ourselves the hdmi cable that is very long and micro usb cable for the power i'm guessing and then we're going to get ourselves the two dust covers so that's basically what we're going to get in the inside okay so the first thing i'm very curious about like is there anything like metal giving this thing some weight because the first impression it weighs quite heavy and this is the one without the mainboard inside so here we can see like we're going to get a micro switch joystick got a very nice touch with it not the wiggle stuff that we've seen before let's put the dust that one inside the plastic we do get a translucent ball top so that's pretty damn cool all right so basically this is the setup and three buttons and oh man these buttons are freaking nice like they're like very tiny so the one thing i don't get when you're looking at the basically the form factor or the space you're having we're also going to do a quick teardown but i wish they added like eight button layout i think there is plates underneath for it that's a little bit of a missed opportunity all right so let's take a close look at this bad boy so what you can see like when you're looking at both of the system the only difference that we're going to get on this one is doing get an extra button over here for the pause and play and both will have select the start Oh man, like the buttons are freaking epic. So I love the configuration when it comes like of the joystick. I'm curious how it's going to be playing in the game. But for now, I must give it an, a very nice pass to it because it feels very nice. Absolutely. So let's remove these things and let's talk about some more about it. Cables already showing you. I'm not going to bother you about it anymore. And here we're going to get a quick overview of the menu. Let's see if there is English. Yep, there is like basically a very nice toilet paper manual deluxe. Explains how everything works. Here you can see that runs on the game stick light 4K. We have seen it before. The, uh, I think it's based on Linux, what I already mentioned. But in the end, it runs with the retro arc on the background. So let's take a look at all the features. Yeah, the other thing you need to take consideration, that's a little bit of a hassle. When you're going to order these things, it's always like, how are you going to order it? And I mean with the following thing. You would expect that when you're going to buy something like this, that it basically have like two joysticks. But no, it's not the case. They're basically selling this like in the game machine, like a game console. And that's it. Like there was nothing else. You need to deep dive into, the, let's say, the page itself or just search a different seller that basically actually sells both of them. So you can plug it into the other one if you need to buy it separately that's absolutely so far i can see not possible so you will have an issue so basically yeah long cable but how you connect this let's talk about that so over here we're going to get the on and off switch with a power led the usb for the second controller micro usb for powering on hdmi and then we're going to get a tf card and basically let's take a close look at this this is 64 gigabyte, so it's quite a big one they're using, like all these weird brandless versions. At the bottom it says like the model number over here, this is the M9 game console. It runs on 5 volt, at least 1000 milliamp battery, or battery, I mean, <coughs> adapter, I had a think brain fart here. But the problem is like there is no freaking adapter included. Oh man, 
I don't also know what this space is for. Was it for my adapter or what? Oh man, I forget what. Not a big problem. I got a phone charger. But do you know what the interesting part is? When you're looking at the main menu itself, it's completely different when you're looking at the box. So I want to say it's misleading or something like that, but also on the selling page, they did show me some different software. But is it a good or a bad thing? When you're looking at the menu itself, it's absolutely the same like some of the handhelds that we have seen before. So here we're going to get the big list, the class, history, collection and search and collection is basically like a favorite list. But at the top we're going to get ourselves the major big list, then we're going to get the classes, history, collection and the search. But the collection is just like a favorite list. Alright, so at the right top corner we're going to get ourselves the pages and the kind of games you can play over here. Here it says CPS. Pressing the R button, we're going to the next page and here we can see all the kind of games you can play. We have MAME, Game Boy, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, PlayStation 1 and of course the Atari. So let's see how this thing works. So let's search for Metal Slug for example and let's see if we can look it up. Yep. And the search method works very well, what you can see over here. You can fairly easy go from the search page to the list itself. That's something that's really convenient, because some of the CPSA systems need to press a button to switch between. It's quite confusing, so navigation is very nice. Okay, so like always, we don't have the option to basically like go to settings and change out the XPS ratio. Pressing start, we do have some options over here. Here we have like save slots. We can change out the controls, but there is no way of basically like going into a menu to change out some video settings. So what you can see is over here is like this weird layout, like this filter that they always implement over these games. So the first thing I'm noticing, like the button touch is absolutely amazing. I don't really find it annoying that we have these very tiny buttons. All right, so there's some, the following thing I wanted to do is try to connect the second controller just to see what happens then. So when it comes to two-player configuration, it works very well over here. Like we can enter the credit on player two, start the game. Of course, this controller doesn't have the pause button, but you can see like everything has no problem or whatsoever. Depending on the collection, what I have noticed, like the loading times can be very long. And now it's going to be loaded up. Okay, so let's choose another one. And here you can see like class reading, that's it. Like it takes a very long time when it's going to read actually all the files they have implemented into the system. A little bit annoying. All right guys, so next up I want to try some MAME. And with MAME, I think the most interesting game to play is of course Mortal Kombat 1 because it's more like a great benchmark, but sadly this doesn't work at all. So this product is not powerful enough to run this game. So let's try some older stuff that maybe works better. Alright, so next up let's try my all the favorite game Blood Bros and the reason I wanted to try it out. Yeah, so this is an issue that I've seen before with the Pandora's boxes that we don't have the right audio speed in combination with the sound effects. Everything sounds freaking messed up. So it's such a bummer that this product has so much potential but they seem to be messing it up with using just the wrong emulator. Alright, so next up let's try a GBA game, just see how the emulation performance of this is. So search my freaking button, I always like the question. Wow, that sounds completely messed up. Oh, let me guess, like, yeah, they basically added turbo buttons to this machine. You can just hear it slows down. So yeah, GBA, like me, does have a lot of issues. Okay, so next up I want to try Sparkster on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis known by the US viewers. Uh, I'm curious if this freaking thing is going to actually play some Mega Drive because also I wouldn't be surprised if they mess that up too. So far, so good, I can see. All right, so let's try the other 16-bit system that is on here. 
Oh, there it is. I was just seriously like searching for my freaking buttons again. But it seems to be that they didn't mess it up with the 6 bit emulation so far. I can hear and see. Okay, so the most interesting system that is on here is PlayStation 1. How well will this run? So let's try just a couple of games on this. So the first game I wanted to try out is Jarius. There, Jarius, Jarius, Darius, Darius is it. And just to see how this two-dimensional shmup will run. I can already hear like it's stuttering here and there. It's still playable. Alright, so next up let's play a little bit of a three-dimensional game. It's time for some crash and I've noticed like this game runs very well. So it's also like demanding what kind of game they're basically using. There is no way of looking at the back end like what kind of emulator they're running this on. But again, this seems to be running just fine. So let's take it up a notch and just see how an other gun will run on PlayStation 1 because I got one that will have some issues, or I think it is. Alright, so let's do the play a two test again I'm just really curious how this will run All right, so let's plug it in okay so it automatically detects the second controller also with some other emulators all right so can you just freaking stop showing the frick demonstration frick off come on all right so let's choose versus mode Everything works fine. Mm -hmm. But you already seen in the demonstration, like... Bloody Horror 2 is a very demanding game and it basically pushes the device to the limit. You can see it runs like on 30 FPS. It's absolutely freaking unplayable. Like this is a little bit of a bummer. Alright, so let's take a close look at the inside and I must say like I'm quite disappointed with this device and the other thing I was not To be honest, I'm not really surprised anymore with these things, you know You're not paying a lot of money for these two player devices and most of the time you're not going to get like amazing performance But it's all like the case that I slap on like basically software, but it doesn't run at all You know like they adding a retro arc they don't configure stuff like it should be and the biggest problem is you cannot reconfigure anything. There is no way so far I know to get into the retro arc, uh, update the emulator, switch out stuff, if it's even like helping because, because some of them are like running so slow because the hardware is pretty damn shitty. So the way they construct this is quite interesting. They're not using these parkers or something like that. They're just using normal screws. Hmm, interesting. Let's see if I remove them all. I think I forgot one. Oh, I forgot one. Yeah, because I need to break this here. Here it comes. Yeah. That's the reason why I couldn't freaking open the thing. Alright. And let's take a close look. Ooh, any the inside. There goes my screw. Okay, so how they made this is quite interesting. So let's talk about the upgrades. So if you want to upgrade your stick, it's even possible on this thing. It just uses a normal Senwa layout. So basically you can replace it with a Senwa. But I must say the joystick, I really like it. It's, it's very clickish, but it plays very well. And the tiny buttons too, like I love the clickies, like touch to it, absolutely amazing. So when it comes to controls, I am absolutely happy with it. So when it comes to the controls, it's absolutely great. But when you're going to look at the inside, it's quite interesting construction. Here we do have like one connector that can plug out. So here we're going to get ourselves like the main board itself. It does have a strip itself. I would say like I didn't like find it really noticeable. Like you do see some lights through the, let's say, prone plexi. But in, in general, like the light feature is not superb. They're using the same method of like assemble the suction knobs at the bottom. So, but another thing I thought interesting is over here, we're going to get a separate PCB for the three micro switch buttons. So you cannot change them out, but that's not of course needed. Then we're going to get ourselves the main board. Look how freaking tiny it is. And this thing comes with the all famous rock chip. And this thing is a quite old one. Okay, so the rock chip is something we do see in handhelds nowadays, but they are using the 30 
I think it's a 30, 32. Uh, yeah, so basically that's basically what we're going to get over here. Two RAM chips. I'm guessing it was something around one gig or something like that. Nothing really fancy, but the chip itself, I will look it up. I will place it in the video, like the specifications list. But it's again, it's not powerful enough to run PlayStation 1. Maybe they could do some minor improvement with some different emulators. But this is basically what you're going to get. It's nothing really fancy. They didn't add any cooling whatsoever. But I just can be honest, like I didn't tear down and I felt it. And after using it for, I think, an hour or so, it doesn't produce a lot of heat. So I think it's not necessary. All right, so let's take a close look in number two, because I'm curious what are we going to get in here? Yeah, we're going to get an encoder board and no main board, of course, but just to see like how this will look in the inside and what kind of encoder board you're using. All right, so let's remove this bad boy and uh, let's see what we're going to get in the inside. All right, freaking screws. All right, all right. So the way they made it is quite interesting. All right, let's unplug this bad boy first so we can look in the inside. So this is what we're going to call a very small, tiny encoder board. I was expecting something big or something, but that nope, that's not the case. Nope. Oh, oh crap. <clears throat> so the thing that we're going to get. All right, so here at the corner, we're going to get the tiny PCB. But what I've noticed, like the cables, they didn't do a very good job. Normally you need to stick the cables through the holes and then solder it. Or that's the way I would say I would do it. But it didn't do it at all. So it also has an... RGB cable or an RGB strip for the LED light up feature. But that's the only thing that we're going to get in this piece of plastic. Fantastic. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to get with the dual arcade game console. And I must say, I am disappointed and also quite deceived when you're looking at some parts. So to begin with, the software itself, it's different than you're looking at the manual to begin with. So it's quite a little bit weird if you ask me. Then we're going to have like the stick. The quality wise, I personally really love it. Like very thick acrylic, the way how they made it, it feels very durable for a tiny arcade stick. The buttons are amazing, the joysticks are great, but the software is kind of sucky if you ask me. Like PlayStation 1, it's a mixed bag, the same goes for MAME. And yeah, they messed so much stuff up and there is no way so far I can fix it. So I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that later bell, become one of the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.